On today's video, I'm gonna be doing a review on the Monster, the Yellow Gold Deep Sea. All right, so with the new releases, this was the one that I wanna say almost broke the internet. Almost broke Michael Jackson's shoulder, which how much it weighs and everything. My shoulder is dislocated literally. It's hurting me very badly. I'm in pain all the time. This is, see this arm, this is as far as I can reach it. Same with this side. I mean, look, it was that watch that we didn't need. We all criticized it. And right now that it's on my wrist, the only thing I can think of is, holy sh is this thing heavy? I mean, it is heavy, heavy. Just to give you an idea, my 40 millimeter yellow gold sub weighs 217 grams. This weighs 310 grams, and that's with a few links out. That's a big difference, 100 grams of gold. I mean, look, now that I have it on my wrist, don't worry guys, I'm not gonna say I love it. I don't love this watch, but the weird part about it is I kind of don't hate it. I don't hate it because who can possibly hate, especially someone like me that's a fan of the Submariner, for a silhouette of the Submariner with the yellow gold in the blue. It's kind of a winning combination. So I don't hate it. I definitely don't love it. And I'm not sure if I want one. I think this is something that if I bought, it'd be one of two reasons. Either A, I'm a six foot seven sports athlete that has huge wrists and it fits like a 40 millimeter, or you just want it as a novelty item. Same way that you had the deep sea challenge and you just kind of bring it out and just say, hey, check out this beast, bam. One of the things I want to discuss on this watch, because listen, it's no different than any one of these other models, except they made it all in gold, is the inner ring. The one that says original gas escape valve with the ring lock system. That's an important part of the watch. And I was guessing, how did they make that in blue? That was that one thing that I kept thinking, how did they make it in blue? It didn't make sense to make it out of a ceramic because it's a very structural part. Now that I looked at it with the loop very well, it appears to be stainless steel or titanium or whatever it is that they're using, okay? And it appears to be anodized. And then it's got the same type of technology that they used for the gold numbers on the ceramic. It looks like some type of a vapor deposited gold or something for the inlays. It appears to be some type of anodizing and it matches very well. And believe it or not, as I look down into this face, which is usually a familiar face when you look at a sub yellow gold blue. Doesn't matter if it's from a 1680 all the way to the 1266 versions, which is the 41 millimeter ceramic. You're used to seeing that gold inner bezel or the rehaul. You're used to seeing that. It kind of looks cool when you look in there and you see blue all the way from the ceramic into the dial. I guess that's that one little touch that makes it look interesting. Also, since the traditional Rolex, Rolex, Rolex all around the inside with the serial number usually blend in, they kind of poke out right now with that gold inlay. I don't know, I guess it's just something new to look at and I find it kind of cool. So right now I can't really remember the figures of what the original AP brick used to weigh. The second gen of the AP brick was a little bit lighter. They skeletonized the case to make it lighter and the bracelet became thinner. But I almost feel that this is the type of watch that weighs close to the brick. This is Rolex's brick right now. Now, another thing I wanna point out is that it doesn't matter what watch you get. Any model that you get in a white, or a stainless steel, whether it's white gold, platinum, or stainless steel, looks a certain size. Once you get it in yellow or rose, there's something about once you put color to the metal that the watch always appears to look bigger. So this thing already being a 44 millimeter and being ridiculously tall off the wrist, now that it's in yellow gold, for me, it just feels a lot bigger. I mean, I don't know 50 millimeter challenge bigger, but it sure feels a lot bigger. So look, I'm not saying that I hate the watch. I've never really been that huge of a fan for the deep sea. I always talk about that time that I traded in when they first came out and the trends were going bigger of watches. 
I traded an unworn V serial Kermit for it. What a mistake. This is how far it has evolved that now it's in yellow gold. Kind of crazy. But if somebody wants that big watch, go ahead. Another thing I want to point out is that with it not having a complication, not having diamonds, nothing of that nature, this is the most expensive watch right now from Rolex. It's crazy. You would think it would be something else. You think at this point we get some type of a calendar, like a perpetual calendar or something. Why not? They definitely have always stuck deep to their roots and just gone crazy sports tool watch. And it's pretty much safe to say that not too many people are ever gonna really dive with this watch and put it close to its potential. But it's cool to know what it can do. Me personally right now, I'm at a vibe in my journey of collecting watches that as much as I love my 40 millimeter sub in the ceramic version, my gold one, I still feel that the perfect example of the Submariner is the 1680 case. For me, that's my favorite. Not everybody else is. A lot of people like the transitional. A lot of people like the non-ceramic. And hey, even the new 41 is beautiful as well. But for me, the best expression is always gonna be the 1680. Now, prices right now to pick up this watch in the gray market is gonna be in the 50s. It could be anywhere from 55 to 60, depending on who you got it from, what's their need, you know? Maybe you get it from a private that's just trying to get out. I don't know, it needs cash, but realistically, I think 58 is like a good number right now where they are going. That's what you can expect to pay for this model. Another good thing about this watch is that it has a dual purpose. It's not just a watch that tells time, but it's also a weapon. If you wanna put this inside of a tube gym sock, you can literally kill somebody with it. Trust me, this thing would kill somebody. So comment below what you think of this beast now that they're out there and you see it on somebody's wrist like mine. And if you like this video, like and share it. Also subscribe to this YouTube channel.